Hi, you are live. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. It is Kara Williams, AKA Hair Color Kilo on Instagram, and I'm so excited to have you guys join me while I show you this super dimensional balayage highlight on my beautiful model, Sophia. So today we are going to jump right into the technique our model is a natural level three coarse hair. We have her blow dried out. She stretched out. I typically like to stretch out my textured hair clients before I do their color. This look today is going to be blown out straight. She's in a wear a straight look, but she also wears her hair both ways. She does wear it both curly and straight. So this is going to be a super versatile placement for your textured hair girls who like to go back and forth. And I'm going to show you how you can just create a ton of dimension without using a whole lot of time. Now, she does have pretty like medium to almost high density hair. She's definitely got some high density areas. And when you're working with your texture girl, sometimes it's a little difficult to get a really big impact color without putting tons and tons of oils in the hair. So I'm going to show you how you can use balayage to create a look like that. So she's sectioned in a four part section. And we're going to be using diagonal back subsection. So this is about an inch and a half diagonal back subsection. And we're going to use those diagonals to actually go around the head to create big sweeps of color. Now, making sure that we're keeping dimension in the hair, because we said we want this to be a dimensional color placement. I'm starting off with lightener. I'm using Matrix Light Master Bonder Inside with 30 volume. The reason why I'm using the bonder inside is because she does have coarse hair that is highly textured and very fragile. She does have a couple of areas where it's a little shorter in the front here. We wanna make sure that we're gonna use a lightener that's gonna give us the impact that we need, but also be able to get the lightness, which is why I'm using 30 volume. So because she's dark and coarse hair, 30 volume is going to help us to get the blonde that we really, really want. So first diagonal back subsection, I wanna make sure that there's a lot of lightness around her face. I'm using a pink brush style balayage brush. So this is not an actual paintbrush. It's actually synthetic bristle um, paintbrush style product club brush. I know you guys are going to ask me again what kind of brush this is. And I'm going to start with tinting these in her hair. So you see my brush is loaded. I want to get close to her root. Even though we're not going all the way to the root, I am going close to the root starting in the hairline and I'm going to paint my first my saturation needs to be good because she does have thick, coarse hair. And saturation is super important when you're using lightener on textured hair. You don't want to really just surface paint. You want to make sure you get both sides to really get as much lightness as you need. So I started with, I'll turn it to the side so you guys can see that first section. I started painting a V. So turn your head just a little that way. Yes. So she's got one section in the front, one section in the back. And now I'm picking up my balayage board and going in with the balayage board to really saturate her in. Notice I've turned my brush to the side now to create blend. I don't want to leave a hard line there. And really saturating those ends. What is great about when I'm using my board is I like to be able to see, hold up, put it back on, the saturation. I can lift it up and see what the saturation looks like on the underneath side. So her underneath is saturated really well. So this is our first V. Because this is a little shorter, just gonna grab that first highlight and give it a little extra saturation to make sure that we get the lightness that we want. So here's our first section right around her face. When you're talking a dimensional highlight, you want to make sure that you are adding areas of depth. We want her to appear almost all blonde. Like she really wants to have a lot of blonde in her hair, but we're not changing her base color. She is a natural three. So the way I like to add some dimension without having to go in, change her base, and come back and do a highlight is by alternating what um, highlights I'm doing. So I'm using lightener for her first highlight, and the second highlight, I'm actually going to use highlight color. So for my second formula, I'm using Matrix um, ULA, so that's Ultra Light Blonde, which is their high lip color, UL Ash, with 40 volume. And second section is the same size, about an inch and a half. My clip. 
And with that section, take my high lip color, immediately keep her on the side so you guys can see a little bit better. Immediately going in with my balayage paddle and painting an entire panel. And this panel is going almost all the way to the roof. And again, saturation is very important. If her hair is not well saturated, you're not going to get the intended, the intended amount of lift. High lift color can get you up to five levels of lift. This is mixed with 40 volume in a two to one ratio. So it is two parts developer to one part color. And I'm taking my time to really saturate this section to make sure that we're going to get as close to those five levels of lift as possible. Again, that's with 40 volume. So see this section, tilt down for me just a little, is completely saturated panel and we have a V underneath. That depth that we left in the V is what's gonna help to contribute to this look being a super dimensional one. So let's go into our next subsection. The great thing so, about, oh, go ahead. Yes, uh, we have a question from Jess on Facebook. Uh, she was wondering how you prepped the hair. So her hair was blow dried. Um, I actually asked her to come in with her hair clean and blow dried. It's not flat ironed. And this gives me the ability to make sure that I am getting maximum saturation when I'm applying the color. So notice guys, I just have a little towel here that I wipe my balayage board off with in between sections because I'm using two formulas and the same board. Um, if I was in the salon, sometimes I'll have two different boards but you want to get that excess product off the board so that you're not going and mixing it in when you're switching your formulas. But yes, for anybody who's just jumping on, she wears her hair both curly and straight. We're doing a straight look today. And she is blow dried out. So not straightened, not flat ironed, but just blow dried so that I can really see my sections and get excellent saturation to get her as light as possible. There are instances where I would leave her curly, and that would be if she only wore her hair curly, never straightened it out. And you can definitely do a placement like this on their natural curls without straightening it out. But in this instance, we are doing a straight look. So I feel that blow dry for me, is the best way to be able to really see my sections, get good saturation, and um, have a versatile look that can be both blow dry straight and warm curly. So she'll be able to do both. Okay, so I just went into that second section. I want to spin her so you guys can see again, and this is a V. I'm leaving a lot of depth in through the interior of the subsection so that this long is really dimensional. And we're really just alternating. This is gonna create ribbons of color. Diagonal back. Inch and a half section. Now going in with my high lift color and painting the entire panel. My high lift color is matrix Ultra light ash, high lift color with 40 volume. I love using high lift color on my textured hair clients to get some additional lightness without having to use lightener. And it really helps to protect, protect their strands from having to use so much lightener on the fragile hair. And that is why the light master bonder inside is amazing because that additional 
fond builder that builds right into the lightener is going to be perfect to preserve her curls when she does want to wear it curly. Okay, so this panel painted almost all the way to the root. You see that full panel? And we're alternating between V's and panels. The panels are of high lip and the V's are of lightener. To really get a lot of contrast and dimension in this look. So Katie is wondering, would you section it differently? Uh, would you section it differently if she wore her hair in a certain part? No, I wouldn't. Um, I, and you guys, anybody who's familiar with my education will see that I work a lot off of a far, four part section. And mostly because many of my customers style very versatilely. So, um, and when I say versatilely, I mean they, they go from curly to straight to wavy. Sometimes they get their hair braided or they might do a twist out. Or So my customers aren't necessarily ones that only wear their hair curly all the time or only wear it straight all the time. So for me, starting from a middle part, is going to give them balance on both sides of the head. And no matter how they wear their hair, their color is going to look good regardless. So no, I would not change the, uh, the placement based on if say she wore a side part or anything like that. But great question. Okay, and now I'm going into a panel with the high lift color, keeping my saturation great. So one thing to keep in mind with coloring textured hair is if you're working with hair that's tightly coily when it's in its brushed out or blow dried state, it can seem a lot higher density than it actually is. So a lot of times textured hair there's not as many strands of hair on the head as it seems, but the strands themselves are larger. So you'll be able to see the difference. Like when I straighten her hair, it's not going to necessarily look as thick as it does when it's curly. So when you're taking your section sizes, you may not be able to take them so thin that you can see through it the way that you could on somebody who had straight hair, but they need to be thin enough that you can get complete weak saturation through the strands. So saturation is always going to give you maximum lift. You may end up needing to use more products than what you would use on someone who has straight hair. And that's another reason why stretching the hair out for me has been best practice because it also helps me to cut down on product usage. So mirroring what we did on the other side and taking a inch and a half diagonal back subsection and I'm painting a V using my light master bonder inside with 30 volume. 30 volume because she has coarse level three hair. So we really want to get some nice blonde pieces. This is open air balayage on dark coarse hair. So we're not going to get platinum blonde on her. But if we could get her realistically to a level eight or nine on her skin tone and with the color of her hair, it's going to look very, very bright on her. So you don't always have to think about lifting to a level 10. You want to be able to create some blonde and dimension. And warmth is going to be okay on her skin too. Like we don't have to go to a level 10 to get her to be like platinum, ashy blonde. Because on darker skin tones, neutral looks ash. And actual ash can sometimes wash you out. So when I say getting her really blonde, I'm not talking level 10 blonde. Okay, so now our next diagonal back subsection, we did our V. This is going to be a full panel. And this is such a super simple technique. I'm wiping off my towel in between. Super simple technique that's not going to take you 
ever to get the color on her hair. So Katie wants to know, is the uh, high lift color runny when using it to balayage? No, it, it, it's actually not. So once I put this on, I'll show you the consistency. But that's a really good call out. If you notice, I'm using two different brushes. So for the lightener, I'm using my um, my, my paint brush style balayage brush. And I love using that because it helps me to get a really good blend, especially um, in some of the thicker areas of her hair. And where I'm using the high lift color, I'm just using like a fluffier, uh, regular color brush. So not necessarily stiff, like a stiff brush sometimes when you go to press into it because you need that tension, it flicks color all over the place and doesn't really saturate. So um, let me show you a little closer. Like the bristles on it is soft. That's it, not fluffy, it's soft. So a really soft um, color brush is what I'm using to apply the high lift color with. And if you just want to take a look at the consistency of it, it's, pr it's pretty thick. High lift color is a lot thicker in consistency than just your regular permanent color because it is meant to be mixed in a two to one ratio. So um, if you're not familiar with using high lift color, when you go to squeeze it out the tube, sometimes it is a pain to get out of that tiny little hole that you make with the back of the cat. Sometimes it's really hard to get it out because it's so thick because that lightener, the developer, when you mix it at the two to one ratio, is going to thin it up some, but it, it typically is a little thicker in consistency. Awesome. Uh, Fazia on YouTube wants to know, what is the ratio of 30 volume to lightener used? Um, I used two scoops, uh, three scoops to four ounces. And this is just personal call out. I find that the, Light Master Bonder inside mixes really well and then gets a little thick. So I use an extra um, ounce of developer for class purposes because I'm working with an assistant right now and I didn't want to stop to have to add more lightener if this started to get thicker while I was working with it. So, you know, you can use your judgment, but I typically do mix on a one to one ratio. But I do find that when you're working with this, over time it does get a little bit thicker. So I just added an extra, um, an extra ounce to it so that I could keep it in good working shape and not have to stop for you guys. Okay, so wiping my paddle off in between. I just really want to make sure that I don't get a buildup of color on here because it's going to make it a lot harder for me to work with. And I could create lines and stripes in the hair while uh, with my paddle inadvertently because my paddle has color on it and then I put it on the hair. So continuing with my diagonal back sectioning, we're going in between using these and panels. And we wanna wrap this all the way around the head. I'm starting in the front of her head because that's where I want the most lightness at. If you feel that you are slower in your application, it is absolutely fine to start in the back because then you can rinse the back off quicker if you need to. But um, if you are used to doing balayage at all, you will find that this is a super quick application. We're putting color on her entire head. We're not skipping any sections. We're not leaving any ease. We're making sure that she's going to get brightness all over, but that we know that high lift color is not going to get blonde blonde so this is going to give her some panels of darker blonde pieces with the lighter blonde pieces that we're creating with the lightener and then also by leaving the depth in the v's she'll have a little bit of her natural color mixed in there for a really really dimensional blend Uh, Jean wants to know if you're leaving the back bottom natural. If I'm leaving the back bottom? Yes, of her hair. Oh, no, we just didn't get there yet. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Nope, starting in the front just to get that color bright around her face. I love brightness around the face. And we do the back for that. 
single strut and paddle. Okay, giving those nice Vs. And again, I can check her underneath. So see how when I lift this up, you, you've got Vs on either side on the bottom as well. And while I'm sliding this off, it's fully saturated on the end. We want that saturation. We don't want a surface paint. Especially if, if you do surface paint with textured hair, your section should be very small to make sure that your saturation is exactly the same on both sides. With surface, um, uh, so, I'm sorry, so that you're making sure that it's not bleeding through because as you can see, her hair is blown out here. I can show you on the other side better where color is sitting longer. See how her hair is starting to curl, like her texture is coming back because the product is wet. So if you apply a surface paint on hair that is stretched out and then that hair starts to curl because it's wet, you could end up with bridges and bumps and lines in your color. So if you are doing surface paint, just make sure your sections are really, really thin so that the hair underneath doesn't end up getting like a hard line because that hair starts to curl when you put a moist product or a wet product on top of it. So last section is going to be a fully saturated panel with a high lift color. So Katie wants to know, does the high lift need to be used on virgin hair only? Yes, the high lift color is color. It is not lightener. It will not lift through color. So you treat it as color. What it does is give you an additional level of lift. So color is made to lift up to four levels. And you know we always say up to because you know that there are many factors that determine how much lift you get being the person's texture, their porosity, um, if their hair is damaged or and what their starting level is will all affect how much lift you're able to get out of the product. So when you are using a high lift color, it gives you that additional level of lift without having to use um, lightener, which is why I love using it on my textured hair girls because we can get pretty light, honestly, with high lift color and not have to pull the bleach out. So this is going to give her some nice variation there. Okay, so now we're moving on to the back. And in the back, we're doing the exact same pattern. We want to make sure that when we paint the V's, that we're keeping those V's low. When I say low, meaning we're leaving depth in the middle of the V's. So, guys, if you can see what I'm talking about with the lightener, it, it's really thick right now. And I can just give it a stir. To just whip that back together. And see, now it's nice and creamy again. So, that's why I kept my whisk in my lightener especially in a situation like this where I'm not working with an assistant, I'm not mixing in batches, I'm going to apply this pretty quickly. So look how I apply the section. The back is going to be easier so you can see. I'm holding the section taut. Like I really want to put tension into the section. Now, if you're painting someone whose hair is in its natural curly state, you might not want to put as much tension as this. It's the same thing like if you're doing a curly cut. But I want to put the tension in, and I'm holding the section out towards me. This is going to give me an angle so that I can come in with my lightener. I'm going almost to the scalp and painting my first section to the V. And I really want to saturate that well. And still holding at the same angle with the same amount of tension, I go and do the other side. This should be saturated enough that it comes through the section. So, 
see how you can see it underneath on both sides there. And then I go in with my paddle and paint the ends. If you have trouble keeping your bees low, like I do, I really do, sometimes you end up, especially on shorter hair, it's easy on long hair, but on hair that's like shoulder length or shorter, it can be hard to keep those bees low. Really paint just the tip of the hair and then start your feather. Because when you feather, you're, uh, you are without fail going to get higher. And if you start in the middle here thinking you're keeping it low, sometimes you'll end up feathering up way too high. So start at the tip and then feather in so that you can keep your bees low because I want all of this depth. And if she wears her hair curly, curly hair shrinks up. So if this was too high and her hair shrunk, this would only look like she had a root shadow and all of this would be blonde. So making sure that you're keeping those bees low, especially on shorter hair, is going to make, make it so you don't lose your depth when her hair shrinks up into her curls. Okay, next section, diagonal back, clip up, moving in with the high lift, full saturation. Really getting it in there. And again, for anybody who's just tuning in, I'm using uh, Matrix Light Master Bonder Inside with 30 volume and uh, Matrix Ultra Light Ash with 40 volume. High lift color. Okay, and next section. So Katie salon. wants to know, uh, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, Katie wants to know how long this would take in the salon from yeah. start to finish. She was asking the question that I was just about to go into. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, so in the salon, um, if I am, you know, not talking and chatting with you guys, I can do a placement like this in uh, probably about a half hour, 45 minutes to do the entire head, depending on the length and density of it. So, and, and that's because I also do this all day. <laughs> so don't feel bad the first time you try it, if it takes you a little longer, um, just, you know, get a curly haired mannequin. They have tons of cheap ones on Amazon that are just easy to play around with, just to get your feel into coloring textured hair if you're not used to it but don't yeah don't feel bad if you're slow in the beginning okay and high lift panel so again we're alternating between low v to keep depth in the hair the low bees are with lightener and the panels go almost to the root. We're feathering. I've got my brush sideways, but we really are saturating. See how much I'm pushing into the hair because I really want this to be saturated almost all the way to the root. And wiping my paddle off in between. Next section is going to be a B. So Carla wants to know, um, how do you prevent bleeding without using anything to separate the hair? Um, textured hair is, is very spongy. It like soaks up everything. Seriously, I'm just I'm not pressing the hair down. I'm just dropping it. So I very rarely, if ever, get bleeding from the bottom section. That does not typically happen. So, um, and I even like put everything in a cap after all of this. So, 
of processing cat to make sure that we keep all of her heat from her head in, keep the, the product moist because you don't want it to dry out. If a product starts to dry out, then you are not going to get the lift that you want out of it. So I put everything in a processing cap. Um, if it's super high density hair, I don't think that'll be the, the case here, but if it's super high density hair, sometimes I'll do two caps. Like, because it's right down the middle, I'll do one cap on one side and one cap on the other just to keep it loose. I use the, I think it's Product Club. Product, I think both Product Club and um, Color Track make extra large processing caps. I don't get anything but those. Like the regular processing caps are too small. So, and even with the extra large processing caps, sometimes I have to use two of them. And going in with the panel, high lift. Going all the way, almost all the way to the scalp. So when she wears this curly, it's going to look super dimensional. And when she wears it straight, it's going to look a lot more blonde. So curls absorb light. You have to think about how your customer wears their hair on a regular basis. If they wear it curly all the time, um, your placement should include more blonde and more highlights in order to make it look really light. If they wear their hair straight all the time, you don't have to do as much highlighting. I can see my tiny section here. And I want to do a V on this tiny section. Again, starting at the corners of my V first. Keeping my saturation good, keeping my tension good. And hitting just the tips, fully saturating these tips with whitener and feathering. Keep as much depth as possible in the interior of these beads. Last section, fully saturated high lift color panel. So even though this color is ULA for ash, She's not going to end up with ash blonde hair from these panels. She's a natural level three coarse hair. So realistically, this is probably going to look golden brown. And she's got this golden brown. It's almost like her base. And then the blonde highlights in between, she's going to end up super, super dimensional. This is a great transformation for your guests who has thick curly hair and want to see a lot of color. Like we want to see a lot of color. And because I'm not going all the way to the root, she'll really, and leaving some of her natural color, she'll have a great grow out. This is something that'll last her a while. Um, our lovely model does not live locally, but she does come to my salon probably about once a year to get maintenance and things on her hair. So because she lives far, this is going to be a great color service for her to get a lot of blonde impact, but still be able to let it grow out and it'll look nice still. Starting with my V's diagonal back, inch and a half sections. Painting the tips. And making sure I get full saturation all the way through. Okay, so you guys see that I just like with my big clunky brush, got a whole glob of bleach like right here on her hair. No biggie, just wipe it off with the towel. The quicker you catch that, you won't get a bleed mark. 
And even if you still see a little bit of it, remember that dry bleach doesn't lift. So you just gotta get wipe it up enough so that it's not wet still. And so, go ahead. Yes. Uh, Kathy wants to know, will the high lift color damage previously bleached hair? Yes. <laughs> In short answer, yes. Uh, so remember, high lift color is color. Would you put 40 volume color on top of previously bleached hair? No. So, um, and, and this is stronger than regular hair color because it gives you more lift than regular hair color. So it's absolutely something that I would not recommend doing on top of already bleached hair, especially not at 40 volume. So, you know, I've, I've known some colorists who will do like high lift color uh, at the same with like 20 volume, super quick to like tone or really brighten a blonde. And if you really know what you're doing and know the condition of your customer's hair and know the risk involved with it, that's one thing. But, um, and also here's another call out too with putting high lift color on top of already lightened hair is it's like a super version of color meaning that it lifts higher and also has a lot of like pigment deposit in that violet to try and because you know if you're working on dark hair and you're lifting with color you're going to get tons of warmth so to control that warmth they have a pretty decent dye load of whatever the tone is and most of the time they do come in neutral um but most of the time they're cool a lot of times high lift colors are ash, 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 pearl, double pearl, double blue, things like that. And you put that on already blonde hair and you're going to end up with blue hair. It's going to be violet. It's going to be, and, and kind of feel like trash. So, but yeah, good question, especially for those who are not familiar with working with high lift color. I think a lot of times we shy away from high lift color because we think it's not going to get us light enough. It's not going to get you the blonde that you want. And it's about using it creatively. Like we're not using this to get her to level eight blonde. We know that that's not where it's going to get, it, especially on coarse um, dark hair, but it will get me a pretty, really pretty, like golden light brown that I might have had to pre-lighten her dark hair to get to. And now I don't have to. I also like using high lift color for reds. Um, we know that bright reds live at levels uh, five, six, and once you start getting in like seven, eights, it's like copper. So you don't really need to lighten a lot, but pre-lightening for a red is gonna give you like that super, super bright red. So instead of using bleach, I use a high lift color often to lighten up some of my darker hair girls, especially like my level twos and level threes who want like a vibrant level five red and you can use it instead of bleach. It's really great alternative when you need to pre-lighten a little, but yes, on virgin hair, because it's not a substitute for bleach unless the hair is virgin. It will not lift through color, it is color. So we do have some new people tuning in that were wondering what volume developer you're using. So I am using Matrix Light Master Bonder inside with 30 volume and also Matrix Ultra Light Ash, high lift color and 40 volume. She has level three coarse hair. Okay, and wiping off my paddle and going in with the panel. So this is this placement is alternating between high lift color and lightener to use balayage to give a quick high impact change on dark hair that's going to be multi-dimensional. And I'm just really saturating. I make sure I'm getting good saturation in these panels. I also will sometimes use high lift in a foil 
with thinner sections and you can really get light when you do that. Pilot color works amazing on lighter level dark hair. When I say lighter level dark hairs, I'm talking your level, your level fours, level five, level six fine hair girls are, are my absolute favorite to use high lift color on because I can get them really almost to like a level eight blonde without having to use lightener. So thinking about texture, texture is very, very important as to what, where you are going to get with your color, especially high lift color. So just don't think it's one size fit all that you had a girl who, you know, was level four and you used high lift color on her and she came out like the prettiest golden blonde and then you do it again on somebody level four and it's brown. And most of the time that will have to do with the fact that their texture. Coarse hair is going to lift if not two levels darker, like that, it really makes that big of a difference, the texture. So take that into account when you are formulating for your curly hair girls. And just don't automatically assume that all curly hair is coarse. A lot of it is fine, even some of the tighter textures. So don't think just about the size of the curl, but think about the actual strand of hair and what that feels like. And that's going to help you to be able to achieve your formulation better if you know that you're working with coarse hair or fine hair. And I know that she, she has very coarse hair and not, you know, not the pattern of her curls, but the actual diameter of her strands are thick, which is why I'm using 30 and 40 volume. Okay, last two sections. So Jessica was wondering if this technique works on all hair textures. Absolutely, this technique can work on all hair textures, but one thing to keep in mind, we talked a little bit about um, how your color is going to read. This is a lot of color. I'm not leaving any of the ease. There's no, um, there's no hair in between. The only depth is coming from the, um, the dimension that's left out in the low D. So that's the only place that we're going to get depth from. This can appear really, really blonde or kind of like overly colored on somebody who has straight hair. You might not get as much dimension as you're going for. So um, on somebody who always wore their hair straight, I might leave a little bit of ease in between just to add, pick up the dimension. And that would be my that would be my only change. Like if they had straight fine hair, I would definitely be like maybe skipping like a half inch section in between just to add a little bit more dimension into the hair. So when she wears her hair curly, this is gonna look really dimensional. But um, when she wears it straight, it's gonna look more blonde, which is what she's going for. She loves blonde. So <laughs> I don't think I could make her blonde enough. We just want to make this look blonde, like almost like it's solid blonde, but with dimension as opposed to a solid blonde that's just kind of flat and boring. Especially when you're dealing with like golden blondes or warmer blondes. If you have a solid honey blonde, a lot of times it can look very artificial and, and just really not enhance um, the customer's skin tone. So this is gonna give us a way to give her a lot of blonde, but also um, but also have it look like a more dimensional blonde as opposed to just like a solid warm blonde, which really just, it looks harsh a lot of times. It just doesn't have like a professional kind of luxury polish that we're going for. Okay, last section is our low V. And look at that. We are fit. So see how these panels, like it just looks like so much color. But she's definitely going to have differences. We'll show you on the other side where we started first because you can see more lift. Okay, so you can already see how this is starting to lift. 
this right now is looking like almost like a level six kind of golden brown. And her highlights right now are almost at a level seven, eight. So yeah, these are almost that level eight highlight. So we're going to put a cap on her because I just have a little bit of time with you guys, but I'll show you how I cap her. Okay. You can tilt your head back for me. Back. Yep. Tilt it back. And I'm going to make sure that these layers come back away from her face. Take the cap and you can go ahead and pull your head up. Come on up. So yeah, she almost like helped me get her hair in there by putting her hair up. I'll show you how I cut the back. So just lightly tuck it in. This is not going to mush her hair together. She's not gonna get bleed marks from the other color but it's just going to give us a little bit of protection against the color drying out so we get all of our lift. Yes, so now she's she's all loosely tucked in. So I'm going to let her process, because I know that's another question you guys might have, processing time. I'm going to let her process until her blonde is where I need it to be. Um, highlight color is a lot like when you're working with other specialty colors that it has a 45 minute processing time. So it can stay on a little bit longer than your typical, just um, regular permanent color. So, and we can see that the blonde is already lifting really well. I'll probably let her sit for maybe about like another half hour to really get her nice and light. And then we'll go into toning. So um, if you guys have any other like last minute quick questions for me, please let me know. If not, then, we, I will be posting her finish on my Instagram page. It's Hair Color Killa. Um, and hopefully you guys will check me out for more education. Yeah, so you do have some questions um, flowing in here. Uh, one is, uh, there's uh, Jess is starting cosmetology school next week and is wondering if you have any tips for a newbie starting in this career. Oh, absolutely. Well, congratulations. You're going to love it here. And um, I say just educate yourself as much as you can. Um, learning does not stop at cosmetology school. Cosmetology school is just going to give you the basis that you need to be a professional. But invest in yourself, invest in education. And my best piece of advice for a newbie is really do your research when you're starting in a salon. A lot of times we get so excited to get on the floor or just in the chair that we skip wanting to be an apprentice or skip wanting to learn. Um, so really do your research, find a salon that's really going to help you grow and educate you so that it'll be a mutually beneficial relationship. So that's, that's my advice for a brand new stylist. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming on today. Thank you so much. Again, check me out at Hair Color Killer. And if you want any more education, I have my own private Instagram page, The Killer Crew. So hopefully I'll see you guys there. Thanks so much. Bye.